Welcome back, scientists. Are you ready for the scientific method? And we're gonna take it one step further. All right, so science is a process. We learn from that process and build on it. Just like any process, there is an acceptable way of doing things. This process in science is called the scientific method. This process has rules, you know, just like sports or games you play. It took many years in order for them to formulate these rules so that scientists practice science in a relatively uniform way. Over the years, lots of theories have been tested and revised or verified using the scientific method. When you ask questions about the natural world, these are the steps that you use to help you find the answer. So let's review the scientific method, and then I'm gonna explain to you something a little newer, and we've talked about this before, but it's still kind of new to us, and we're gonna kind of tell where it goes in this scientific method. Okay, so first of all, we have, number one, we ask a question. And when we ask a question about the natural world, it's usually because we have observed something. Now when you observe things, you observe them with your senses. So when you observe something, and then you have a question about it, and you want to learn more, then you continue on in the scientific method. So remember, and I know I keep referring back to my hummingbirds, but remember when I had the hummingbird feeder, and I saw this black stuff in the hummingbird feeder, and I told myself, wait a minute, I clean this once a week. I give them fresh food once a week. I want to know what is happening with my bird feeder. Is this going to hurt my hummingbirds? Okay, so I observed something with my eyes, my senses, and then I asked a question about it. So the next step in the scientific method is to make a hypothesis. And remember, we follow the if-then format. So if I, feed, if I clean my hummingbird feeders more often, then it shouldn't be getting black in the middle of the week. So I determined instead of just doing it once a week, I would do it, I would clean it twice a week. So, that is my if-then statement. That's my hypothesis. So that's what I think is going to happen. All right? So, number three, plan an investigation. So research, experiment, and observe during your investigation. So my research took me to a website that um, there is a lady in Alaska who has a whole bunch of hummingbird feeders and a whole bunch of hummingbirds that visit her feeders. And so I was reading on her website, and I found out that there is something that happens when that sugar water heats up and it causes some um, like mold to grow inside the feeder. And so she suggested cleaning the, bird, the feeder um, quite often. So that was my research, my experiment. So I decided to clean it twice a week instead of just once a week. So every Sunday and Wednesday, I cleaned out the feeder and I put new um, sugar water in. So, uh, collect and analyze my data. Well, I had four different feeders at four different places on my property. I did the same thing with the feeders, with each one of the feeders. So, uh, when I was collecting my data, I was going around and looking at each one of the feeders. And I was determining if there was still that black stuff inside the feeder. Um, I noticed that two of my feeders, the black stuff came back faster than on the other two feeders. And I started thinking, well, why would that be? Well, with what I had researched and what I had read about, it told me that because those get more of the direct sunlight, they heat up more, and so the black stuff comes to those feeders, back to those feeders, uh, quicker than in the other feeders. All right. So analyze my data. So I look for patterns. So I did find some patterns. Um, draw conclusions. Well, my conclusions were that I'm not going to be able to clean them just twice a week, especially when I have two of them that are in the direct sunlight. So I decided to start uh, cleaning the feeders three times a week, and that worked out better. And even with the ones that had got the more direct sunlight, it really helped. So share my results. So who did I share my results with? Well, I've been sharing my results with you, but I also told uh, my daughter Cheyenne so that when she helps me with the bird feeders, she'll know that uh, now we do Wednesday, uh, yeah, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, when we clean our hummingbird feeders. So this is the scientific method. 
Now, um, was this what I, what I did for a science class? No. This was just something that I have at home, the hummingbird feeders. But still, I went through this scientific method to figure out what I could do to best help the hummingbirds. And I did also find in my research that that black stuff causes the hummingbird's tongue to swell. And if their tongues swell, they can't um, eat. They can't pull their tongue in and out, and then it causes them to starve. So in my research, I also found out that it does have a detrimental effect on the hummingbirds. All right, so this is the scientific method. This is the process that scientists go through. Now, sometimes they'll get down to this investigation and collecting the data part, and when they're collecting their data and analyzing it, they look and they see that it's not coming out the way they thought. So since they have to revise their plan, then they may have to go back up to plan another investigation and start all over using something different in order to get the results um, to answer their question. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, during the scientific method, and what I was telling you about, there are variables. There are variables that, that play into this. And when we're planning our investigation, we can identify those variables. So there are three different types of variables. I have them written in blue. There's an independent variable, a dependent variable, and a controlled variable. So an independent variable. The independent variable change is changed by the scientist in the experiment. So the question you want to answer to determine whether it's an independent variable or not is, what is changed on purpose? Okay? So when I go back to my hummingbirds, well, wait a minute, let's go ahead and figure out all, what all the variables are, and then we'll go back to my hummingbirds. All right, so a dependent variable is measured by the scientists during an experiment, okay? So what am I measuring to determine the outcome? Okay, and then there's also a controlled variable. A controlled variable remains the same during the experiment. What never changes, okay? All right. So I'm going to go back up here. So my independent variable is changed by the scientist in the experiment. Okay, so my dependent variable depends on the independent variable. So what, am I, what was I measuring? That's going to be my dependent variable. So in my experiment, I was measuring whether or not that black mold grew in the hummingbird feeder. Okay, so I want to know, so what I'm measuring is, is there, is there black mold or is there not? So that's what I'm measuring. So my independent variable, what has changed on purpose? Well, I changed the, uh, the sugar water and cleaned the feeder. So that's what's changed on purpose. So I did that twice a week. So that would be my independent variable to see if the black mold is there. So what stays the same? Well, I always clean it and I always put the um, sugar water in there. So I always have one cup of sugar to three cups of water, and I boil that on the stove for three minutes, and then I let it cool, and I use that in the hummingbird feeder. So that was a control. I also used the same hummingbird feeders each time, and I put a, a label on each one of the hummingbird feeders, and I put them back in the same spots so that that wasn't, that wasn't changed either. So I put A on the one that is right out in front of my um, uh, bedroom window, and I put B, the one that's by my garage, and then I put C, that is in the back uh, of in the back of my house by the um, garden, and then I put D by my back porch, so that when I put them back out, I would put them back out in the same places. So A and B were always the ones that got more of the direct sunlight and C and D were the ones that were in shade more of the day. So that kind of helped me too to determine uh, if my results were consistent. I don't want to change up the feeders and it be something to do with the feeder itself. And so I made sure I put them back in the same places. Okay, so th these are variables. So variables come in with the investigation part because when you're investigating, when you plan your investigation, you have your materials list. And when you're thinking about your materials list and the steps that you're going to take in order to perform the experiment, then you can identify your independent, dependent, and controlled variables. So, I've got some examples that I want to go over with you. And I've got my handy-dandy paper here that talks about two different
different scientific questions that we could ask. So this would be in our asking questions part. And these are questions that we could ask. And then we're gonna determine independent, dependent, and control variables. All right, do plants grow taller when fertilizer is used? Okay, so um, I might say, my hypothesis might be, and I have to follow the if-then formula, okay? So, um, if plants are given fertilizer, then they will grow taller. Um, I might even make it a little more in-depth than that. Uh, if plants are given fertilizer, uh, given natural fertilizer, the plants will grow taller than the plants without fertilizer, okay? All right, so uh, independent variable. So my independent variable will be the use of fertilizer. So either the use or non-use of fertilizer in this case, because we want to see if the plants that where fertilizer is applied to the ground, if that makes the plants grow taller or not, okay? My dependent variable, now this is something that I'm going to measure, and this is gonna be something that I will use for my results to convey those and communicate those with others, the height of the plant. So measuring the height of the plant of the ones with fertilizer and comparing those to the ones without fertilizer. So. My independent variable will be the use of fertilizer. Either, so I may have a group over here where I use fertilizer and a group over here where I don't use fertilizer. And I'm gonna compare those. Then I'm gonna measure the height of the plants in order to tell whether the fertilizer helped them grow taller or not. So my control will be, on the ones where I do use fertilizer, I'm gonna measure the amount of fertilizer that I use and use the same amount um, on each, in each group, okay? So if I, have, if I have five pots of tomatoes, okay, the tomato plants, and I put fertilizer around those, and then I have five over here where I don't, okay? The amount that I use on those plants will all be the same, okay? So I'm gonna measure out the amount, and then also the type of fertilizer that I use will be the same, okay? So we've got our independent, our dependent and our controlled variable. All right, so I want you to make sure that you write these down. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause the video. You're gonna need these later. I'm gonna be asking you questions after my video. All right, so the next question is, will a paper airplane fly farther if the paper is smaller? Hmm, that's interesting. So my hypothesis might be if I use a smaller piece of paper, then my paper airplane will go farther than a large piece of paper, okay? If then. All right, so what would my independent variable be then for the paper airplane experiment? Well, the independent variable would be the size of the paper. All right, so. If we go back here and we look at our question, what did the scientists change on purpose? Well, we changed the size of the paper on purpose. I'm gonna skip this over, I'm gonna end up running out of room. Oh well, okay. So the size of the paper is what we change on purpose. Now, the dependent variable, what am I going to measure? Well, I'm gonna measure how far the paper airplane goes. And I'm gonna, um, compare that from a large piece of paper air, that I used to make the paper airplane to the small piece of paper that I used to make the paper airplane. So what is my control? So my control is something that does not change. I am going to use the same type of paper. It's just going to be a different size. So my control is going to be the type of paper I use. Because if I change the type of paper, that might change the whole experiment. So I'm not going to change the type of paper. So if I use um, copy paper for uh, the paper airplane, 
for the small one, I'm going to use copy paper for the large one too. Uh, if I use uh, construction paper for the small one, I want to use construction paper for the big one too. So that's going to be my controlled variable. So as you can see, there are three different types of variables that we can find in the scientific method when we're planning our investigation, when we're following the steps and looking at the materials. There are three different ones. There's the independent, which is changed by the scientist, the dependent, which is the one that we are measuring, and the control, which always stays the same. All right, so at the end of this video, you're gonna see some questions at the bottom about the video and what you've just seen and what you've just heard. So if you need to go back and replay some of it or uh, and write some things down because you're gonna have to answer the questions, all right? So I want you to keep watching, keep thinking, always stay curious, and I'll see you next time.